Hey carnivores, welcome to Eat More Vegans. My name is Al and today we're having a luau for a cause. That's right, we're making Kahlua pork shoulder like they do at luau's in Hawaii. I actually started this cook yesterday, so let's go back to yesterday in the kitchen. I'll tell you all about the cook and all about the cause. Hey, welcome to yesterday, I guess. So uh, tomorrow I'm gonna be cooking this. So let's, uh, let's see what we got here. So from Meat and Bone, Meat and Bone was very generous and donated this Duroc pork shoulder, this whole butt to us uh, for this cook. And so thank you to uh, our friends at Meat and Bone. If you've been here before, you've heard of them. Uh, let's go ahead and open this up and take a look at what we got. So this is a bone in pork shoulder. It's a whole shoulder. Boy, does it look incredibly well marbled. Looks like they did a really nice job of trimming the fat. Even the fat cap is, uh, is not too thick. I don't think we have to do any trimming on this. So let me explain to you what we're gonna be doing. We're making Kahlua pork, which is, if you've ever been to a luau in Hawaii, that's what they do. They dig a big hole, they take a whole pig, they salt it with a special salt, they wrap it in banana leaf, and uh, then they roast it in that pit. And we're gonna be doing as close as we can to replicating that whole experience here for this cook today. It's a simple recipe, which is a surprise that it tastes as amazing as it does. There's really only three ingredients, one of them is a pork shoulder. So let's get the pork shoulder ready. And while we're doing that, I'm gonna tell you a little story about our guest of honor. So Doug, who uh, you're gonna meet in a little bit, joined the US Marine Corps, uh, enlisted himself in 2006. And uh, he was deployed to Iraq as part of Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2007. And of course, like so many others, he came back with PTSD. Uh, which just is horrible. And, you know, he shared something with me that just breaks my heart. Uh, they lost a big portion of their team to suicide after they got back from PTSD. Uh, of course, that's a combat wound uh, that doesn't rear its head until these poor guys and gals are home. So Doug was in a really dark place and uh, contemplated suicide himself. I hope he's okay with me sharing that. And found a purpose, he found a cause. Doug found that fishing, and specifically kayak fishing, actually helped him to relax and to unwind. And as he did research, he found that fishing and boating are actually activities that are really good for folks suffering from PTSD. And he got really into kayak fishing, like to the point where he got certified as an instructor. And he decided the best way that he could help other vets who were suffering from the same kinds of things was to teach them how to do the same thing, how to kayak and how to fish and how to give them a sense of purpose and something to focus on other than the horrors of war. And he bought five acres of property down in Texas along the water and he's developing that not just as a handicap accessible home for himself, but also as a handicapped accessible facility that will allow large groups of other vets, other service members to come and get some peace and some quiet and learn this new skill. And so when I heard that Doug was coming through Raleigh, I invited Doug and his friend Spencer to come by and be on the show. And I told him I would make something really special for him. And uh, they told me that pork was their favorite kind of barbecue, which is good because I'm in North Carolina and pork barbecue is kind of the signature here. So I decided to make something different than a normal Carolina or Texas pork shoulder and decided to do this, uh, this Kahlua pork recipe. But through this video, when you meet Doug, you're gonna find we're gonna do some really special stuff for him. Like it's not just gonna be come on the show and taste like most people come on the show and taste. I'm not gonna give away what we're doing, but definitely stick around. I think you're gonna be rooting for this kid as, uh, as we get through the video. So let's talk about our second ingredient. This is alaea salt from Hawaii and I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. And this is sea salt from Hawaii that is enriched with the clay from uh, volcanic ash. And so the lava is actually in here. It gives it the red color that it's got. This is one of the signature flavor profiles that makes the Hawaiian Kahlua pork taste the way that it does. So normally you're used to seeing me put a whole rub on a pork butt, but we're not putting a whole rub on. The only seasoning we're putting on 
is actually going to be this alaea or however it's pronounced salt by the way you should be able to get this salt in a gourmet grocery store but in case you can't i'll uh try to remember to put a link down in the description where you can get it on amazon because you can actually get this stuff on amazon okay it looks pretty good you guys ready to see the third ingredient these giant things are our third ingredient so in hawaii the way they do this is they dig a big pit they call an emu line it with lava rocks get it hot burn the coals down so those rocks are hot and the coals are down there then they line it with banana leaves they put the whole pig on the banana leaves they cover it with more banana leaves sometimes tea leaves as well cover it up with dirt so it forms a seal and then they let it cook in that pit now of course my wife won't let me dig a big hole in our backyard but that's okay we have pits that we can use uh, to create the same experience and we're gonna do this as a wrap with banana leaves rather than lining one of the smokers with banana leaves don't worry about whether they break a little bit because we're not trying to form a seal these banana leaves are really here to impart additional flavor on the pork so I'm gonna lay these out with a little bit of overlap and I'm gonna take my pork butt Alea salt or however it's pronounced uh, all together with it and I'm going to drape these uh, first layer of banana leaves and now I'm going to turn this sideways I'm going to try to get a relatively tight wrap I don't want a lot of juices rolling around in there all right so to make sure that this stays together we're going to do a quick truss job on this just like we truss roasts and birds and all of that stuff nothing fancy here all right, this is ready. Now I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator. It's kind of like a dry brine, but it's not really dry brining because there's no air that's gonna to get to this. I mean, these leaves are porous, but we're not gonna dry out this meat. But the salt is gonna absorb into the meat. The uh, moisture from the leaves is gonna help it adhere to the meat. And then in the middle of the night, cause we're doing a long cook, I'm gonna get up and fire up the smoker and we're gonna get this on smoke. But I will see you back outside after the sun comes up. Aloha and welcome back to the backyard. So that was a pretty inspirational story about Doug, right? And we're gonna do some amazing things for him. He's gonna be here in a couple hours and I've got a bunch of great stuff planned, so make sure you stick around. Uh, and also that Kahlua pork I'm pretty excited about. That pork shoulder has been cooking on uh, Yoda, our Yoda YS 1500 pellet smoker, and I'm using mesquite pellets. Now normally you would use Hawaiian kiawe wood. Uh, that's what they use in Hawaii, but you can't get that here on the mainland and it's really a variety of mesquite. While it's not as tropical a flavor, it's a very close flavor profile. It's the closest you're gonna get. So you're gonna wanna cook over mesquite if you're uh, doing this recipe. When I put the shoulder on at one o'clock in the morning, I put a temperature probe in so I can track it. It's at 150 degrees now. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap it in aluminum foil and keep it tight for the rest of the cook. You wanna go see what it looks like? Okay, so we can see the smoke that these banana leaves have taken on and these are porous so a lot of that smoke's going to get through. So I'm going to wrap this in two layers of aluminum foil, kind of like we did with the banana leaves. Now I've got this wrapped nice and tight. This is going to keep the juices in. It's going to help it to uh, cook a little bit faster on the way through. We're going to put this back on Yoda. It's going to continue cooking until it gets about 200 degrees where we'll check the temperature. But I got a bunch of fun stuff planned for between now and then. So stick around. I'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. As I promised you, Doug and Spencer have arrived and uh, we've got a lot planned. I told you the story of how Doug got to this point, but maybe Doug, can you just take a minute and explain how you plan on making a difference for all these folks that are suffering? Absolutely. Um, the goal and dream of Redford Ranch is to provide a location and facility down on the Texas coast where we uh, own some property. That we, we would like to build a facility that's handicap accessible and, and bring in children, veterans, uh, uh, families who are affected by suicide and PTSD from the Iraq and Afghanistan war, wars. Bring them in and give, give them a weekend on the Texas coast and, and uh, give them hope for the rest of their lives and, and try to show them the one thing that's missing outside of treatment I think always is, is like a passion, uh, a hobby, uh, some sort of goal. Uh, for me it's kayak fishing and, and it's different for everybody but uh, that's, that's what Redford Ranch is about is sharing that dream and, and, and passion with others and, and filling that gap between treatment and the VA. That's awesome. How is it, is it named after Robert Redford? So Red, Redford <laughs> Ranch is named after uh, uh, my service dog, Redford, who, who a lot of people have been fortunate enough to meet, but but everybody that did meet him, he, he, he touched their lives. And he was such a special dog that I just decided to name it after him. He was, he was just a dog that 
meant the world to me. That's an awesome story. I, uh, I've got two dogs. I don't know how many each of you guys have, but uh, it's a special place. So let's get to the festivities and we'll come back and talk about that stuff again in a minute. So I told you guys we're doing a luau, right? Yep. So I know you guys are big, tough <laughs> Marines, uh, but and it's probably gonna get a little bit more embarrassing uh, as the day goes on, but we're gonna start with putting Lay's on and we're gonna check the pork in just a minute. Hey there. Oh, hey, we've got a visitor. Come on in. Good to see you, Bob. You. Bob, you want to introduce yourself to the guys? Uh, I'm going to make you put this Benson. on. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Doug. Hey, Doug. Nice to see you. You too. Yeah. I appreciate all you've done for uh, the country, your uh, efforts in the uh, in the war and uh, battle and uh, your, your injuries. Okay. And, uh, I, you just got out. That's you? right. I'm, I'm a baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I appreciate that too. It's well, great, you. great effort. Yeah, I spent six years in the Air Force and, and enjoyed uh, every bit of it. So uh, thank you for your service. Yeah, thank you. Hey, thank you for your service, Bob, and sure. of course you too as well. Thanks, Al. New, newly, yeah. newly yeah. minted <laughs> civilian, right? So, Bob, thank you for stopping by. I really sure. appreciate well, it. Give me you want to, you want to keep that? I got four granddaughters, and and there just be so many battles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm sorry you don't get to stick around and taste, but I, we'll save some for if you want to come back later. I, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for stopping thank you. by. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you guys. All right, that was fun. Might be some other people stopping by. We'll see how the afternoon progresses. So, all right, let's take a break and go check on that pork shoulder. Boy, it smells good. Let's see. Uh, let's see if it's ready. Boy, this feels ready. So, what we're feeling for is we want this to feel like we're going in and out of a warm stick of butter, maybe a jar of peanut butter. Yeah, I think this feels right. This is ready. Let's get it off of here and uh, get it resting. Okay, so if you've been here before, you've seen me rest in these coolers. All I do is I'm gonna take the whole thing, foil, banana leaves and all, and I'm gonna put it here in this cooler. We're gonna cover it up. It's at a little over 200 degrees right now. It's gonna come down just a bit. It'll probably get down to 180 or so as we rest it for an hour or so, and then we'll be able to taste it. But before that, there's more fun coming. And this you're really gonna like, stick around. Okay, welcome back. So while the uh, pork rests, we're not gonna rest. <laughs> if you've been here before, you know what's coming. If you haven't been here before, you are gonna enjoy this. And I know you've seen some of this cause you guys are subscribers to the channel. Uh, so these are the flamethrowers from Grill Blazer. So this is the grill gun. This is what I use to light uh, Darth and to light the wood fired grills. And this is the sous vide gun that I use for searing steaks, etc. So these are, you know, you guys, they're not as advanced as the weaponry you guys use <laughs> in the Marines, but they might be as much fun, maybe even more fun. All right. <laughs> so here's how it works. So up here, we're going to turn on the gas just a little bit, like a pilot. And this trigger here actually lights the pilot. And then down here is a safety you're going to hit with your pinky and then you're going to squeeze the grip. Now that is 400,000 BTUs at just over 3000 degrees when it fires. Okay. So we have something special to use. We're going to do an experiment. You've seen my is Wagyu worth it, is Iberico worth it, which is better. We're going to see which makes a better flaming puck this ridiculous <laughs> Boca burger or these ridiculous Beyond burgers. You can pick which one's which and then your goal is to incinerate it as fast as you can using the flamethrowers, all right? So here is a, a Boca burger, close your nose. Oh, <laughs> stuff's disgusting, I don't even wanna touch it with my hands. And then uh, these are the Beyond burgers. So yeah, <laughs> my wife says I should give them to the dog, but <laughs> I love my dog. Yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> wish that on anybody's dog. So yeah, all right, so I'm gonna step out and uh, you guys on the count, turn on your pilots. All right, on your marks, get set. Fire in the hole. So in the only category that these could be considered good, 
the Boca Burger makes a better yeah. flaming puck would have to, have than to the agree. Beyond Burger. <laughs> yeah. All right, so the guys, let's go ahead and set the uh, flamethrowers down in their stands. And this is really hot, by the way. I learned this in another video, so don't touch this. All right, did you guys have fun with that? Of course. Yeah. Did you uh, did you enjoy it? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, was it as fun as the stuff you used to use in the Marines? <laughs> yeah. All right, that's okay. <laughs> it doesn't have sorry. to be. So listen, you're going to be cooking for the guys down at Redford Ranch, that's right? Absolutely. We're going to be feeding them. And we want them to have good food and well-seared steak. So I talked to Bob and Tim, the owners of Grill Blazer, and they're gonna be sending you a sous vide gun to use at Redford Ranch. <gasps> you can use it on meat, you can use it on vegetables as long as you don't <laughs> eat the vegetables afterwards. <laughs> Uh, you don't have that problem down there, but people in the north, they hear use it to clear snow out of their driveways, <laughs> right? But this is going to be yours. Uh, it's about $170 value, and they're just going to ship it to you. So their, their way of saying thank you to you and all of you who have served uh, and uh, giving you just a little something to remind you of this and have a little bit of fun thank, while you're down you there. Thank you very much. All right? So enjoy it. Thanks. And everybody, All this right. is my neighbor, Norb. Come on and introduce yourself to the guys, Norb. Hey, I'm Norb. Spencer. Hey, Spencer, nice to meet you. Hey, Norb, I'm Doug. Hey, Doug, nice to meet you. I'm uh, Norb Rosado, a veteran of the Army National Guard, and I'm here to learn more about uh, Doug and Spencer and what they're doing uh, with their organization. Thanks for stopping by, Norb. I Absolutely. appreciate this. We're gonna talk all more about okay. Redford Ranch through the afternoon. Excellent. All right, thanks, man. Thank you, Al. All right, all right, welcome back. I've got one more person, a really special guest I wanna introduce you to. This is Glenn. Uh, Glenn also has served our country yeah. in the Air Force in Vietnam, yeah, right? Yeah. So Glenn, we're having a luau. We're cooking yeah. pork like a luau. So I'm gonna make you put this on. I know you're a tough soldier, <laughs> but you gotta wear the flowers. <laughs> so Glenn, uh, this is Doug and Spencer. Yeah, and uh, nice meet you. we talked a little bit earlier about Redford Ranch and what they're starting and how yeah. they're going to help soldiers with PTSD. And I thought if you uh, wanted to say something to them, this would be a good opportunity. Okay. Great. I'd like to thank you for what you're doing and for your service. And I was lucky I didn't have any problem with PTSD or anything. I was out in the Air Force Base, not out in the attack all the time. Let's get motored <laughs> occasionally. That was it. <laughs> Ranch is a good idea. I think they can help my veterans recover from that. I really appreciate it. And like I said, I thank God I did not have that problem. We appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. you. It's nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you guys. Hey, thank you, Glenn, for stopping by. I hope you're going to stick around and taste some of this pork at our little luau, right? We'll be tasting a little bit. He brought his family okay. with him. Okay, yeah. they vote yes, that's a good sign. Okay, so that's gonna be next on the agenda. So I'm gonna open up that pork, we're gonna pull it, and we're gonna give it a taste, so stick around. All right, the time that these guys have been waiting for, time to taste and see uh, how my Kahlua pork is. Before we do that, if you haven't got the message yet, look, if you are not a vet, if you're not a combat vet, this PTSD thing is serious and you gotta pay attention and you gotta support people who are trying to solve the problem. And if you are a combat vet and you're suffering, what, what do you gotta say to these folks, Doug? I gotta say there's there's a lot of options out there uh, other than medications, and, and, and I would encourage you to uh, seek them out. Hey, you got friends out there. We all support you. These folks all support you. There's organizations like Redford Ranch that are here to support you. Reach out and get some help. Okay, I got one more thing I gotta do, and you guys are gonna like this before, uh, before we taste. I'm sorry, I gotta make you wait one more second. So you were commenting earlier on the Yoder YS 1500 smoker, right? This thing's like a tank. 1500 square inches of cooking area, right? Yeah. So are you gonna get something like this for the ranch to cook Texas barbecue for the guys down there? Sure, at some point, definitely, yeah. At some point? Yeah, yeah. How about right now? 
say that again. How about right now? So I talked to Joe Phillips, the president of Yoder, and I told him what was going on. And I've got a new smoker coming that I'm going to be using. And Joe and I agreed this belongs at Redford Ranch. Oh. And so on behalf of Yoder and Eat More Vegans, thank, enjoy thank it. You. I will teach you how to use it. <laughs> I, I will come down there and cook with you. I, I will hold you to that. I want you to take <laughs> care of the rest of those vets. I appreciate it. And I want it. them to eat good. Tell them I said thank, thank you. Hey, you guys, Yoder did a really nice thing here. Meat and Bone donated this Duroc pork shoulder. Not a cheap thing for this cause. The folks at Grow Blazer, thank you for all the sponsors who chipped in for this. Uh, you guys are all awesome. I can't thank you enough. Uh, it couldn't be a more worthy cause. One, one more worthy cause. <laughs> Your bellies? Yeah. All right, yes. who wants a fork? Yes, please. All right, you guys ready to see how I did? All right, dig in, guys. Are you guys got a taste too? Grab this one. All right, we ready? Yeah. Cheers. 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 Cheers to you. I think I nailed wow. it. What do you think? Yeah, oh, I think fantastic. So. We got moist tender like yummy, guys. Moist. Hey, listen, I hope you like this. If you're not sure about how to make pork shoulder, I did a comparison of Texas versus Carolina barbecue that I'm gonna put right, right, right. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm doing this right over here on the screen. Check that one out. If you've already seen that, watch the one that's next to it and we'll see you next time on Eat More Vegans. <laughs>